Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the Nutty Block Compton Crips. The Nutty Block Compton Crips are on the west side of Compton and originated in the 1970s. And since on, they have become a powerhouse gang in Compton. The Nutty Block's area was a major Crip hangout for Crips all over in the 70s, where they all hung out at the Grandy Apartments, which is on Grandy Ave in their turf. Over the years, that would change with several robberies starting amongst the Crips in Compton going into the 80s. Some of their main streets in the Nutty Block's turf that they claim is 165th Street and 166th Street. The Nutty Blocks are known to rep a New York Yankee gear to rep their set. The Nutty Blocks are allies of hoods like Southside Compton Crips, the Atlanta Drive Compton Crips, and the Park Village Compton Crips, just to name a few. The Nutty Blocks are rivals of gangs like Westside Paru, Capanilla Park Paru, Neighborhood Compton Crips, the Santana Block Crips, the Lantana Block Crips, the Pocket Hood Compton Crips, and many more. The Nutty Blocks have a lot of rivals, which are too many to name, making them one of the most hated gangs in Compton. But with that being said, let's get into some cases. On November 9th, 2005, several young men were hanging out on South Exmoor Avenue and Nutty Blocks turf. A dark Pontiac would be driving in the area, checking people, and seeing where they were from. The dark Pontiac was full of Nutty Block members. They pressed a young man on the corner, but they didn't bang. This led to Pontiac driving up on two men named Nakia and Michael. This led to an altercation which led to both Michael and Nakia being chased down and both being shot losing their lives. Next day, three men, Herbert, Javon, and Jeffrey from Nutty Block were in the Grandies bragging about how they shot some dudes and pulled a lick, which they robbed both Michael and Nakia. Jeffrey kept running his mouth and telling people who he shot. So by 2006, this led to them being arrested. Several of the people that Jeffrey told began to snitch on him. This would lead to all three men, Jeffrey, Herbert, and Javon, all receiving life sentences. On April 27, 2006, a young man named Anthony was shot multiple times, losing his life. The shooter was a nutty block crip named Infant No Good. Infant No Good was spotted running from the area by several people looking suspicious. A neighbor that lived on the street that Anthony was shot on seen the whole thing. They said that Infant No Good ran up on Anthony and shot him multiple times stood over him and finished him off. If it no good did the shooting because his cousin Tiny No Good was killed by the track New Park Compton Crips, which was said that Anthony and family was a part of. If it no good was getting payback. If it no good would be later arrested off several witnesses seeing him running from the area and picking him out of a lineup. Several people would later recant their statements out of fear. He still received 25 years to life. On June 4th, 2007, Desiree was at Compton Transit Center in Compton. When she heard several shots, then seen a Nutty Block member on the floor laid out, he would lose his life. Desiree would later go to the police station and tell police what she saw. She seen an Acacia Block member banging on everybody who passed by in the station. She then seen twin brothers in a group of Acacia Block Crips being the main initiators. One of the twin brothers named Jimmy walked near the Nutty Block member and shot him. She later identified the twins. Twins were later arrested and other members from the hood were placed in a cell with them. They will be recorded where they talked about someone having a snitch for the police having arrested them. Inside the cell, Jimmy said he didn't do the shooting. Instead, he said another dude named Darius from Acacia did it. Two weeks before this shooting, Darius' brother was shot by the Nutty Blocks. With Desiree's testimony and the recorded statements in the cell, Darius and Jimmy both got life. December 28, 2007. Robert was an OG for Nutty Block. Around 5 p.m., Robert and his brother Timothy stopped at a store on the corner of Alondra Boulevard. At the store, Timothy and Robert would notice two men looking at them, but they left before altercation could start. As they drove on McKinley Avenue, Timmy noticed the side of him a car was finna shoot. He yelled out to Robert, and Robert tried to drive away. The car was fired at over eight times, taking Timothy's life. At first, Robert didn't want to snitch until he learned his little brother lost his life. He later picked a man from Track New Park named Charles out of a lineup. At the time of the trial, Robert was in jail himself for life for a robbery he committed, but he didn't care about being labeled a snitch. He went on the stand and he testified. This got Charles 132 years to life. In January 2012, Barry was sitting in his car which was parked across the street from Longfellow Elementary, waiting to pick up his little brother from school. Two men then drove alongside of his car, named Jason and Darius. They started shooting, but they ain't hit a thing at point blank range. Barry got out of his car and ran. Police were on the same street as the shooting and went in pursuit. This led to a high-speed chase, which both Jason and Darius were later arrested. 
They were from Acacia Block. The shooting happened in Nutty Block's turf. Both Jason and Darius received life for shooting nothing. Now this next case is about Nutty Block's internal beef. Ike and his siblings Champagne, Ezell, Frank, and Keon all lived in Compton. They were from Nutty Block Crib. They threw a party at their apartment, which hosted over 100 people. A lot of people at the party were from multiple hoods. Multiple other Nutty Blocks was there as well, like Juju, Chop, and Mike Dog. Chop started creating problems in a party with other hoods and started dissing Santana Block and the friend hood Compton Crips who was at the party as well. This led to Champagne trying to shut the party down and this led to several other altercations. Juju and Ike began fighting, which Ike got the best of Juju. This led to other Nutty Blocks joining in on the fight. This led to Ike being stabbed. Ike then pulled out a strap and then another fight followed between Chop, Juju, Juju's brother versus Ike and his brothers. And again, Ike was stabbed again. Mike Dog and Juju then started shooting at Ike and his family, which Ike was shot in the chest, taking his life. Nobody at the party told police anything. Over the next month, Mike Dog, Juju, and Chop were all arrested. Juju would deny any involvement in the shooting, but several witnesses would give a full account of the party. Witnesses would say that Juju and his crowd were their aggressors. Juju, Mike Dog, and Chop all received life sentences for their role in the crime. On October 26, 2014, around 3.45 a.m., Natalia and her two friends were driving when her car was struck by a car that ran a stop sign. The driver of the other car was Brandon from Nutty Block. Brandon had another car trailing him, and it was his homie Edward. One of Natalia's friends heard both men from both cars yell, Get the strap! And they both started shooting. Natalia and her friends ducked, and no one was shot. Police were in close proximity of the shooting, and quickly caught up to Edward who crashed his car and his strap was found inside the car. He would be the only one charged with the shooting, with Brandon walking free and Edward receiving 48 years to life. Forrest was from Nutty Block. He was trying to come up and he was trying to hit some licks. Forrest was hanging around with a woman named Sandra. Sandra told Forrest he should rob her sister Sharmika's boyfriend Ely. Ely was known for having money and selling work all throughout Compton. Forrest and his fellow Nutty Block members James and William put a plan in motion to rob Ely. Forrest got Ely's number from Sandra and called Ely pretending to be a customer saying he wanted to meet up and buy. At the meetup, Forrest directed James on what to do. James walked up to Ely's car, which Shamika was in the car with Ely. This became a failed robbery, with both Shamika and Ely losing their lives. Forrest and James were later picked up and both received life for their roles in his crime. This will conclude this episode of Warren Cali. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.